जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभाद्र माय की जाय श्री श्री लक्ष्मी नृसिंह देव की जाय श्री श्री गौर निधा की जाय शिव जय पता कमराज की जाय Very happy to have this opportunity to speak in front of all of you on this holy occasion of Shiva Jai Pataka Maharaja's Vyasa Puja. Uh, and I was asked by Narahari Chaitanya Prabhu to speak a little bit about Guru Thakra. So I will say a few words. What does it mean to follow Guru? who is Guru and uh, why should we follow Guru. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, our uh, uh, Param Guru or the predecessor spiritual master, he explained this tattva very beautifully. Please listen very carefully. It's very, very important for every one of us. He said that his main contribution to Gaudiya Vaishnava theology uh, was the emphasis on this point of uh, Drishya and Drishta. He was uh, emphasizing this again and again and again that we should become drishya or seen by the Lord. He said that uh, in this material world we are programmed to see the world. We are programmed to exploit the world uh, by our senses. And this program is extremely deep. And whenever we hear something about knowing or uh, whatever, we always uh, have the same sort of impression that to know something means to see something. To know something means to sense it with our senses. But this way of dealing with the world, uh, with the matter, uh, is called exploitation. 
we are looking down at the world uh, as if we are uh, the Lord and Master. This program of lording it over material creation is very, very extremely deeply rooted. And even if we come to the spiritual world, to the spiritual life, uh, to the spiritual practice, to some spiritual organization, the same habit uh, is persistent. It's still there within our heart, and we always want to, you know, to somehow or other, uh, to lord it over. It may be, you know, in, in many different capacities, you know, you may be lording it over as a GBC or whatever, ABC, or whatever, PhD. <laughs> it's all, basically, all the designations, how we are exercising our controlling tendencies. Uh, so, uh, what to do? We will never be able to understand or even to recognize uh, the Lord, uh, what to speak of seeing the Lord, if we still have the same habit of trying to see the Lord. Uh, so, therefore, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, he said, therefore we need Guru. And who is Guru? Guru is the soul uh, who is capable of seeing the Lord by his internal vision, not by external vision, not by the way of exploitation. You know, we come to the Lord and the same old habit uh, being turned on, we look at the Lord and we see, oh yeah, very nice, very nice, very nice. Let me enjoy the Lord. <laughs> But we will not be able to see the Lord, we will not be able to recognize the Lord if this habit, if this program is still uh, very much in work, very much working within our consciousness. So, therefore he said, we need the real Guru, and who is the real Guru? The real Guru is the soul who is in Samadhi, who is seeing the Lord in his internal vision, not by external senses, not by external means, not by the means of exploitation, but uh, the soul uh, who is absorbed internally. And by this uh, process of samadhi, uh, he is uh, being able to see the Lord. And how do we achieve this process of samadhi? And he says, Basically, uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, he explained uh, that uh, if a guru is not in this stage of samadhi, if he is not completely 100% absorbed in the spiritual reality, he is, he is not a real guru. He is a false guru. He is just misleading others because uh, he is more or less teaching that you should uh, try to understand the Lord by empirical means or by the means of exploitation. So, but how, how we can get into this absorption, into this state of samadhi? First of all, we have to see the example of somebody who is totally, completely absorbed. If we see uh, Jai Patak Maharaj, we can see his complete 100% uh, absolute dedication and absolute absorption. I would say that only somebody who is in Samadhi uh, can go through all the difficulties which he had to go through, which he has to go through now, and be completely undisturbed. Why? Because of this uh, ability to be uh, internally uh, concentrated. And what is the secret of his concentration? This is actually uh, the most important thing which we should understand. How we uh, go into this state from our external state, from our externalized state of being into this internal state of being, uh, the secret is very, very simple. We should be absorbed on the mission of Lord Chaitanya. Through the meditation on Lord Chaitanya, on his lotus feet, on the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, uh, we will be able to find 
this internal path, we will be able to understand what does it mean to be in Samadhi. And ultimately, we will be able to reach this very elevated state of consciousness. And what we can see in the personality of Jayapatak Maharaj by uh, extreme mercy of Srila Prabhupada, which Srila Prabhupada uh, showered upon him, uh, Jayapatak Maharaj got this extreme absorption into the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. As far as I know, that is his uh, pranam mantra. His pranam mantra uh, is glorifying him as somebody who is absorbed in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. And through this internal absorption into the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, everything else becomes possible. Everything else becomes uh, all miraculous things which are there, all these miraculous achievements which uh, Narahari Chaitanya so meticulously listed in front of us. Absolutely unbelievable achievements. I remember, you know, once Jai Patak Maharaj came to Russia. He came to Russia. Uh, at 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, his flight was scheduled <laughs> next day. On this day, when he came to Russia, he visited three continents <laughs> within one day. <laughs> so he came in a completely, uh, I mean, from the material point of view, it's not possible, you know, to, to visit three continents <laughs> within one day and still be alive. So, uh, not only he was alive, he was very much alive. Uh, he was very alive and he started giving class. Of course, he fell asleep during the class. It also happened because he was so tired. <laughs> but, you know, but as soon as he woke up, he, he continued his class. <laughs> so, but what I mean to say is that uh, all these miraculous things, and, uh, you know, I'm sure anyone who knows him can list all these miraculous things abilities of Maharaj, because uh, his uh, energy, his, his, uh, you know, his ability to do thing, things in this material world is not out of this world. It's out of some other realm. It's definitely superhuman. It's not human. But where does he get it? How does he get it? What is the secret? The secret is his absorption in the lilas of Lord Chaitanya. Because uh, Lord Chaitanya himself, he came and he showed by his example what does it mean to be absorbed in the lilas of Lord Krishna. And when we become, and it's very difficult for us to become absorbed in the lilas of Lord Krishna. It's difficult because it's difficult for us to relate. There is no, there is a huge gap between our reality and Krishna's reality. And even when Krishna comes here in this world and he behaves in a very human way, still uh, this gap is, is huge. But then Krishna himself comes as Lord Chaitanya. And uh, when he comes as Lord Chaitanya, he shows by, by, by his example what does it mean and how we can be, uh, how we will be able to be absorbed in the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Uh, and by meditating on the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, we uh, uh, ultimately will be able to achieve the complete absorption in the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati, he gives the very beautiful um, rule, actually very beautiful uh, niyama, very beautiful law. He says that uh, to the extent we will be able to serve the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, yatha yatha, yatha yatha, tatha tatha, means uh, to which extent we will be able, yatha yatha gaura padara vinde vindente bhaktim hrita punya prasim, hrita punya rasim, when after accumulating a lot of pious credits, hrita punya rasim, uh, we will be able to be concentrated on the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, tatha tatha sarpati hridya kasmat, Radhapadambhaja Sukhamburashim. All of a sudden, 
to the same extent uh, we were able to absorb ourselves in the service of Lord Chaitanya, uh, we will be able to feel the feelings which uh, Srimati Radharani feels towards Lord Krishna. This, uh, this happiness of her love to Krishna becomes our possession. How? By which means? How we will become empowered? Uh, Narahari Chaitanya Prabhu, he was telling about this process of empowerment. By this process of empowerment, uh, through Guru Parampara, uh, we should be able to become absorbed in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. The same way as Jayapadak Maharaj absorbed. This is how Parampara system works. Srila Prabhupada came to the West. And the only book which he brought with him to the West for his own reading was Chaitanya Charitamrita. For distribution of others, he, uh, he brought this first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. That was very important. He was relishing this nectar. But during his passage from India to America, uh, every day he was reading Chaitanya Charitamrita. <laughs> and there is a famous lecture of Srila Prabhupada when he came to Gainesville, which is a university city, and now near Gainesville, this famous Alachio community in America is there, the biggest uh, community of Prabhupada's disciple. Uh, so when Prabhupada uh, came to uh, Gainesville, to this university city, he started giving lecture. And uh, uh, the first words of his lecture, he said, now I am so far away from uh, Navadvip, from Mayapur, uh, the place of Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> He's in America, in a very, you know, posh and uh, beautiful city, and he says, oh, this city is, is, is a very far, far province of this universe, in comparison with the capital. What is the capital of this universe? It's Mayapur. Why the Mayapur is the capital of this universe? Because uh, in Mayapur, in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya going on eternally. And he was carrying uh, the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya within his heart always. And he brought these pastimes of Lord Chaitanya to the West. And that was the secret of his success. What did he give? How did he empower his disciples? Why his disciples are capable of doing such inhuman, completely superhuman feats uh, just by uh, the absorption which was there in the heart of uh, Srila Prabhupada, the same absorption he invested in their heart. And of course, uh, Jayapatak Maharaj is one of the most glorious and glowing examples of this absorption. How always he, you know, I remember <laughs> uh, my first Navadvip uh, I was a young Bhakta at that time and uh, for the first time we came to India, everything was completely new and we were very naive and we hardly knew any pastimes of Lord Chaitanya because at that time all the books <coughs> were not uh, translated uh, into Russian. So we, were, we started traveling and of course we started our Navadvip Dham Parikrama from Yoga Pit. Uh, and uh, we came to Yoga Pit, this big group of, first group of Russian devotees who were there. It was 1989. Uh, and uh, we started listening. And somebody else were there, some sannyasis, senior leaders. And they were describing all the pastimes of Yoga Pit. Uh, what was going on in Yoga Pit. And particularly they were describing this beautiful pastime of Brahmachari, who was hiding, uh, it was not in Yoga Pit, of course, it was in uh, Sriva Sangam. Uh, but still, uh, somehow or other, this pastime was described in Yoga Pit, how this Brahmachari was hiding away, uh, trying to have a glimpse of the Kirtan of Lord Chaitanya, and how this uh, Brahmachari, who was only drinking milk, was severely chastised by uh, Lord Chaitanya, who said, you think just by drinking milk you will be able to go to Vaikuntha, you're fool number one. <laughs> and how this Brahmachari, he was so happy by uh, having the glimpse of the kirtans of Lord Chaitanya and, uh, uh, and um, uh, by his chastisement. 
So somebody told this story and some other stories. And then all of a sudden Jayapatak Maharaj came. As usually he's late because he has so many things to do. <laughs> he, he was scheduled to be there and to guide us into uh, this journey through the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. So he came and, uh, and he said, so somebody told you some pastimes which took place and you know, uh, everyone said, no, no, Maharaj, you, you please tell. <laughs> so and Jai Patak Maharaj, he again started telling the same pastimes, which we just heard. We just heard these pastimes and Jai Patak Maharaj, because he didn't know, he started telling the same pastimes. But we were hearing this pastime as if we never heard this. <laughs> because uh, by his absorption and by his enthusiasm and by his, uh, you know, by his energy and everything, he basically totally uh, uh, took us into this place. We were not uh, in 1989, we were in 15 something. <laughs> <laughs> we were there with Lord Chaitanya and with this Brahmachari and he, you know, we were, we were listening with open mouths. <laughs> we, we couldn't just, uh, we were afraid to lose just one sound of his voice, how he is describing these pastimes. And uh, that was my uh, first lecture of Jayapadak Maharaj, <laughs> his introduction to this. So what I mean to say is that uh, he took uh, this complete absorption uh, of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, which were there in the heart of Srila Prabhupada, which enabled Srila Prabhupada to do superhuman achievements. So the same thing happened, and this is how Parampara works, this is how empower empowerment works. Srila Prabhupada made Jayapataka Maharaj uh, completely absorbed into the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. And this internal absorption into the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya uh, uh, is actually the cause, the root cause, the root of all his external achievements. When we hear about his external achievements, this Bhakti Vriksha, or this temple, or that temple, or Malaysia, or South Africa, or sorry, South America, or traveling all over the world, or distributing books, we have to understand what is the root cause. If we will, if we mistake all these achievements as some external achievements of somebody who is very ambitious, we will commit an offense. Because we will not be able to understand the spiritual nature of all these achievements. But if we understand that the spiritual nature of this achievement is his love to Lord Chaitanya, his, his love to his Guru Maharaj, and uh, his love to Lord Chaitanya, if we understand this as the secret of his success, uh, of all his achievements and everything else which he is doing, then only we will be able to understand who he is and what he is trying to teach us. Because uh, there is a very easy, we can easily make a mistake, you know, by seeing these external achievements, we can say, okay, I will do the same. But if we try to do the same uh, without having the same motivation, the same cause, uh, the same source of energy, uh, what, what will happen? Oh, oh we will be dead. <laughs> or, or we will just maybe fulfilling some, some ambitious desires. Uh, uh, from the spiritual point of view, uh, the value of it uh, will not be much. But if we understand the real nature, how the love of Lord Chaitanya manifests in the life of Jayapataka Maharaj. How uh, his complete absorption in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya gives him so much energy and so much desire, so much enthusiasm to preach. Then only we will be able not to imitate him, but to follow him. And this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be his followers. And his followers means, what does it mean to be his follower? First and foremost, uh, it means that we have to have the same internal absorption. We have to try to get the same internal absorption. 
yesterday uh, I was speaking with somebody uh, yeah yesterday or the day before yesterday I was speaking with somebody who was uh, with, an, with an Russian artist who is living in Mayapur and he's making pictures to Jai Patak Maharaj's book this is the book of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes and uh, I remember when for the first time I came to the West and started living in Sweden, the first thing which I heard, uh, I was living at that time in Anviksgard in Sweden, that's uh, some community, Vaishnava community, and I was living with Kirti Raj Prabhu and his wife uh, Hari Puja. He was the great leader of Russian preaching at that time, great champion and um, under the uh, guidance of Harikesh Maharaj at that time. So, uh, <laughs> the first thing which I heard, the first time when I heard the name of Jayapatak Maharaj was from the lips of Mother Hari Puja, wife of, uh, of uh, Kirti Raj Prabhu, because at that time she was transcribing the tapes of Jayapatak Maharaj for this book uh, about Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> that was in 1988. <laughs> Uh, 23 years later, he's still writing this book. <laughs> now it's in, a, it's in a completion stage. This uh, artist told me that he already made um, so many pictures for this book and the first volume of this book is there. But, you know, of course he could have, uh, you know, finished this book very quickly. But no, he's relishing his absorption in writing this book. <laughs> For 23 years, he is writing the same, collecting or uh, amalgamating all the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya from different scriptures, from five different books, into one book for our benefit. Uh, but why? What is the ultimate reason? Ultimate reason is that he wants us to be as absorbed in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya as he is. And uh, by this means, we will become uh, empowered. This is the, the way to become empowered. This is the way to achieve uh, love of God. Uh, this complete absorption in the Samadhi is the only way to, to understand Guru. Again, Guru is the soul who is in Samadhi. Guru is not external achievements. Guru, guru is not external dress. Guru is not anything of this world. <laughs> guru is... Uh, this uh, absorption of the soul into the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. And if this uh, absorption is there, he is the real guru. And how we determine, and you know, it doesn't mean that all of his disciples will become real disciples, because you may have a real guru, but you still may uh, be a bogus disciple. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but still we can see uh, that he is transferring or he is uh, transmitting this, uh, this absorption uh, to other people. And other people, because of him, because of uh, his desire uh, that uh, others will also be absorbed, they also do uh, amazing things. They also do some miraculous things. And uh, what is his preaching mission? Uh, Narahari Chaitanya Prabhu was speaking about this Bhaktivriksha program or this cell program or this program of distribution. He just wants only one thing. He wants that the whole world would come uh, to the spiritual world, back to Krishna, because of this absorption. And his preaching is just manifestation of his internal absorption. It's not, again, an external ability, external capacity which is there. It's his external, uh, it, it, it's his internal absorption into this transcendental subject matter. Complete meditation on the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. So, this is what we should learn. By glorifying Jayapatak Maharaj, we should glorify the root cause of all his achievements. Not just external achievements. And we should try to become like him uh, in this regard. Try to follow his example, not to just externally imitate something which, which he is doing externally, which may be very attractive. 
uh, then we will be able also to achieve something very significant. Then we will become uh, the bona fide disciples of a bona fide guru. And then we will be able to carry uh, on his mission. Recently I was speaking with him. He... <laughs> I'm trying to serve a little bit on some GBC subcommittee. It's called Guru Services Subcommittee. And we were developing some program to uh, facilitate the gurus and their services, uh, specifically educational program. Then Jai Patak Maharaj, he, uh, this year for the GBC meetings, for the annual uh, GBC meetings in Mayapur, he uh, not sponsored, he composed himself two proposals, uh, maybe more, but uh, two of which I aware. Uh, and these two proposals are on the topic of how to make one million gurus. <laughs> so, <laughs> before that, Narahari Chaitanya Prabhu was was speaking how Jayapadak Maharaj had this program of, you know, one million cells or one million groups or so many devotees. Now uh, he is one step ahead. <laughs> not just one million <laughs> bhakti vrikshas, not just one million cells, <laughs> one million gurus. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, we were speaking about merging our proposals because in spirit and in essence our proposals are the same. And I was speaking with him about this and he was telling me, Prabhupada wanted that his, all his disciples should become gurus. All his disciples should become gurus and teach the world. This is what Prabhupada wants and I want uh, that GBC should think about it. How we can make one million gurus? You know, maybe... You know, now we have maybe less than 100, so maybe next step is not 1 million, but 1,000, <laughs> uh, step by step. But still, you know, he's thinking about this, uh, but what does it mean, 1 million gurus? 1 million gurus means 1 million souls in samadhi, <laughs> which is not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to get into samadhi, it's a very elevated stage. Uh, and this is how we should understand. And, you know, Jayapatak Maharaj has his ideas, and it's very interesting. Let's see what GBC will say about this. Whether GBC will say, yes, yes, one million gurus, or GBC will say, wait a second, <laughs> let's sort out some business. <laughs> uh, it remains to be seen, but uh, that's his mood. He is absorbed internally, and he is happy by this internal absorption. And um, he wants the whole world to become happy through this means of internal absorption. And whatever we are doing here uh, in this temple or in any other temple in the world, following his footsteps, is this. We are doing this to become absorbed in the service of Lord Chaitanya and his mission. And uh, uh, by being absorbed in the service of Lord Chaitanya and his mission, we will be able to become absorbed in, into the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. And this absorption into pastimes of Lord Chaitanya will ultimately uh, bring about uh, the absorption into the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And uh, very naturally, we will be able to uh, get into the spiritual world. So. Thank you very much. I spoke too long. Sila Jaya Padaka Maharaja Ki Jaya. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jaya. Kaura Prevanande. In 1989, the Russian first group came to? Yeah. 1989, yes. That was the first time they came? First time. I met them in the airport. Yeah, you were there in Calcutta. Yes. Okay, I was also there. I was in the airport and the plane became late. They did Kirtan on that time. The whole airport was half of it. Yes, yes, yes. I still have pictures. Maybe you're there in the picture. <laughs> I can... They were going from Calcutta to Vrindavan. They had finished that. Mm. And they were going for another festival. Oh, no, no. First they came to Calcutta, airport from Moscow, and then to Mayapur. 
from Mayapur we went to Puri and from Jagannath Puri we went back to Mayapur and then only to Vrindavan. Yeah, today about 200 devotees were there. Um, no, it was less. There was around 70 devotees from Russia and there was a big entourage of other people. Uh, Govinda, Bhakti Bringa Govinda Maharaj was there, Indradyumna Maharaj was accompanying us in the park, Kirti Raj, of course, his wife, and so many other people were there. Some disciples of uh, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, many, many. So there was a big group, but uh, Russian devotees were 70. It was almost everyone <laughs> at that time. <laughs> it's, uh, it's probably around 50,000, 50, 50, a lot. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>